Kid Jones channel, a place where listeners will get a balanced perspective of issues affecting the black community. Here we do not mollycoddle, water down, or soften any blows. This is a stage where both genders are equally scrutinized. Here, there is balance. Right, welcome back. This is Faith Jones coming at you again with another one of my videos, and it is good to be back amongst my people. Today's topic biracials and the confusion and distraction that they cause for the black community. Um, I know that many times, if anybody has ever been on my page or you know read anything that I've ever written about biracial people, I really don't feel comfortable talking about biracials. And this is because um, it's been a, a topic of confusion for me because I have many um, relatives in my family who are biracial and I love them. You know, they're my family. You know, I can't deny them and I, I can't, um, you know, separate myself from them because, you know, they are still part of my bloodline. So whenever the topic comes up about um, biracial people, you know, some people are on one side of the fence saying that, you know, biracial people are of no use to the black community. And then you have other people that say, well, you know, black uh, biracial people are black and they are definitely part of the black community. And as a matter of fact, there have been many biracial people who have stood up for the black community, like Colin Kaepernick and um, the young man in this picture. I can't um, call his name right now, but, um, you know, they've, they've been, you know, pretty instrumental in, you know, standing up and saying things, you know, making stands for the black community. And um, I get that. I, I really do. But at the same time, you know, you also have a lot of the biracial people that that um, openly don't identify themselves as black, like um, Stacey Dash, uh, Tiger Woods, uh, oh goodness, uh, Raven Simone. And even though I know she's black, I don't even really think she's mixed. But um, yeah, you know, you have those light-skinned biracial people that um, don't even identify themselves as black, you know? And and so you have this whole um, distraction and, and um, confusion in the black community over these people. And um, here's, here's the conclusion that I've just, you know, recently come to. Um, I was on Cynthia G's post and uh, she made a really good, um, point about biracial people that it is not their fault that they are biracial that basically you know if you were to um, blame anyone it would be the parents you know that you would have to lay um, the, at the foot of blame you would like you would have to lay the blame at the foot of the parents who create the biracial children the biracial children themselves cannot help that they are born biracial and um, really, we as black people cannot expect them to be completely all hands on deck when it comes to black issues because they themselves are not fully black. And I think that this is the realization, this is the confusion, and this is the distraction that we as fully black people, and I, I don't want to get into an argument about who's fully black and who isn't fully black. We know what a what a phenotypical black person looks like okay so you know i don't want to get into that dumbass argument i know i'm fully black i if, if you've ever seen me on camera you see my big nose and you know, i know i know that black men have many times called me ugly because i got this big ass nose and this dark ass skin so we know what the phenotypical black person looks like okay let's not get into that dumb ass debate about who's fully black and who's not fully black we know who's fully black okay 
And when I say fully black, we all know that we might have a couple of percentages, you know, you know, be a couple of percentages off from being fully black. Nobody's fully anything. White people aren't even fully white. So let's just not even get into that dumb ass debate, please. Um, my whole thing is we know who the black people are and we know who the white people are and we know who the mixed people are. Now, with that said, get all that dumbass confusion out of the way. Um, you know, the confusion that we have, you know, with mixed people is that many times, you know, they start off riding hard for black empowerment. Then they turn around and embrace their white heritage. And then we as you know the fully black people we act surprised you know we act like oh wow you know they were like riding hard for us this moment and now the next moment you know here they are over here married to a fully white person what happened to the black pride well they're, they're mixed you know i i have come to the realization that when it comes to biracial mixed people my brothers and sisters who are not biracial we have got to stop expecting them to be all hands on deck like we are some of us aren't even all hands on deck so how in the hell can we expect somebody who is mixed race who isn't you know fully black to be all hands on deck we have got to start just um protecting ourselves from believing too much in the biracial people and their, um, how can I say, their work in our community. If they do some work in our community, that's great, but we should not expect it. And if they turn around and, you know, do some kooky stuff like, um, you know, start dating white people or people that are, you know, of their other culture, it shouldn't be a shock to us. If they um, marry a racially ambiguous looking person, it shouldn't be a shock to us because they themselves are not fully black. So we have got to stop putting this expectation on biracial people to be, um, you know, hard in the paint black when they really aren't fully black. You know, they are doing what they are born to do. And 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 I'm, I'm not saying that... Um, biracial people are flaky or anything like that what i'm saying is that you know they're that that's what they were born as they were born as both they have multicultural backgrounds so we cannot you know expect them to conform to just one culture you know that that is a unrealistic expectation that we as black people have because of the one drop rule because black people believe so much in this one drop rule that white people made up. We want to bring everybody into our group that are not fully hands on deck and then act surprised when they begin to exhibit actual actions of people who are biracial, who have multicultural backgrounds. We cannot ask these people to ignore the other sides of themselves for black unity. We got to have our own black unity, those of us who are completely black within ourselves. And we have got to stop relying on the biracials and allowing them to come in and cause this confusion and distraction. You know, it's okay to love them and it's okay to accept them. Like I said, I have biracial people in my family who I love and I accept them. They're here, but I don't have the expectation of them like I do with my fully black relatives, if, if that makes any sense. My expectations of them is that they are not fully black and I don't expect them to act fully black. And once we start coming to this realization and just letting that go, I think we would be better as a people and we would be less confused. You know, getting back to uh, Cynthia G's point of um, blaming their parents, holding the parents accountable. I think that is absolutely correct because when we as fully black people enter into these relationships with non-black people, 
and we create children with these non-black people, there's always going to be a conflict of interest there because now we have slept with the enemy and they are enemies of ours. We don't have any friends. I don't know why we as black people always want to form these coalitions with other racial groups that hate us. And just because they'll sleep with us, we foolishly think that they are going to be on our side, that we, we have formed some sort of alliance because we, um, we have formed the, the, the um, genitalia alliance with them. People will sleep with people that they hate all the time. I mean, black people sleep with other black people that they hate all the time. So, you know, the whole bedroom talk thing, you know, with your enemies and allowing them to come in and, and procreating with them is irresponsible. And this is an activity that really we need to seek to end. I'm not trying to say who people should sleep with or whatever. You know, if you believe that... <laughs> There's going to be some kind of racial unity at one day and, and it hasn't happened yet, especially for black people. Then you just be my guest and, you know, raise your hand so the rest of us can see you and identify you as the traitor that you are. And we can just not waste any more time with you because people that do this, they're doing nothing but causing a lot of confusion and distraction within the black community. And that's what these biracial kids are. Now, you know, we got them. You know, they're a group of people and we we can't get rid of them. And, you know, they, they are allowed to exist and they have a right to exist. And they have a right to exist as what they are. Multicultural people. And we cannot expect these multicultural people to be of one cultural mindset. If you have one culture, you can't expect a person who is multicultured to be of a, of a, of a um, how can I say, an autonomously cultural mindset. You can't expect that. They have multiple, multiple cultures in their bloodline, so we can't expect that from them. You know, we can love them, but, you know, don't expect much of them when it comes to black issues. You know, and I think that also um, mixed people, they have been used over the centuries um, by white supremacists. Uh, white people, they, they get to cherry pick. They get to pick and choose which black people they would rather deal with and relate to. And I had another video where I used LeBron James and Stephen Curry as an example of two different types of black people. And I do believe that anybody that does have an ounce of black blood is black simply because at the end of the day, after, you know, the smoke clears, when it comes time to draw the line, when it comes down to crunch time, white people are going to draw that line because they do not want to become racially extinct. They accept mixed biracial people faster than they will fully black people because they get to pick and choose which black people and notice I said black people which black people they get to relate to the most and the reason why I can't really fully um, rely on a mixed culturally um, racial person to forward the movement of black empowerment is because one season, they may be gung-ho for black empowerment, but then in the next season, you'll see the same person, the same mixed culturally ambiguous black person begin to uh, exhibit that cultural diversity by catering to the other group. So they are never going to be fully hands on deck. This is what I'm trying to explain to my brothers and sisters who are of the full African phenotype. They're not ever going to fully be hands on deck, ever. And, we, and we've we got to stop expecting it. We can love them. We can accept them as black, but we cannot 
depend on them or trust them fully to be all hands in with the movement. We can't. You know, and 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 when we when we do, you know, open ourselves up to trust them and think that they're like fully all hands in, they turn around and they disappoint you. You know, this is the the, con the confusion and the distraction that we don't need. So we have to set ourselves up mentally as a people to yeah, acknowledge our biracial brothers and sisters. Yes, they are our brothers and sisters because they are half of who we are. But at the same time, they are not fully who we are. And we have to go into this thing because this is war. And we have to have knowledge on all fronts of who we're dealing with, who our allies are, and who our allies aren't, and who our potential enemies are, and who our potential, um, how can I say, risk are and it is very risky dealing with biracial people at this point it's it's a risky thing i'm just going to put it out there um white people you know use them the same way that they have used us and when it is convenient for them they um you know relate to them and they you know put them up on a pedestal and here's it. Here's on um, many, many. Re, um, how can I say? Here's an example of how white people have used biracial, biracial people to give off the illusion of inclusion. You know, for many years, Hollywood used biracial women as a prop to say that they're fair and that they are. Um, how can I say that they are? Um, representing black women in Hollywood. For years, Hollywood has done this with biracial women. And we as black people, we just be so happy to see any black person on TV that we don't look at the fact that, you know, this is what they're doing. I mean, some of us have, some of us have pointed it out. We pointed out the bullshit, but the majority of us so happy that white people have embraced or given the illusion of inclusion, that they have embraced our blackness and accepted us as black people. We just hold on to any little show of acceptance from white people. Barack Obama, he's another example of a biracial person that white people used as a pawn to give off the illusion of inclusion. By him not being fully black, it was acceptable for him to become our first black president, our first biracial, not fully black president. And he was propped up and he was also destroyed when they got done using him as a prop. So this is why I say it's all bad. In my last video, I said this, I said, you know, um, our biracial brothers and sisters are our brothers and they are our sisters, but they are used as the biggest form of confusion and distraction to our people as a whole group. White people know this. They know that we are so eager to be accepted and we are so eager to be shown any type of um, kindness, any type of inclusion that white people will pick and choose those of us black people that they want to relate to and prop up on a pedestal. I have rarely seen white people take the fully black, phenotypical black person and prop them up on a pedestal. I've rarely seen this. Most of the time, it is their cherry-picked biracial black people that they prop up before us and say, see, we are fair and we are accepting of you black people. But not really. They're not fully accepting of all black people. Not fully.
And this is what the biracials have been used for over the years. And this is why we have got to stop depending on them. I won't be satisfied. I won't be truly satisfied with anything that white people um, do for us in this country until I see them fully embrace a black phenotype the way that they prop up the biracial phenotypes. They continuously do this to us and they continuously use our mixed children as pawns to say that they are not unfair and that they are very inclusive when in reality they have never been truly inclusive of all of us. And it's just about goddamn time somebody said Black people, we have got to stop wanting to be included in anybody else's society. We have got to really stop this. We have got to start appreciating and building for ourselves. Appreciating ourselves and building for ourselves. Black men, especially my phenotypical black male, my dark mandingo man, you have it worse of all with the self-hatred. Not all of you, but just too many of you, Tyrese. Too many of you to count that are like him. Beautifully black on the outside. Warriously built. And so intelligent and bright. Your light shines brighter than anything any Caucasian could ever imagine that they could shine and you take your talents, your beauty, your power, your masculinity, and you waste it trying to fit in to a society of people that hate you. And you turn your back on your own people, you turn your back on your women, and you turn your back on the dark skin, beautiful, magnificent, strong babies that you could be making to carry on your legacy, to make weak pawns, more weak pawns for white supremacy to use against your own people who look like you. This is what you're doing. You're not fitting in. You are creating more pawns for them to use. And you think that you are being accepted. And you think that your children are being put at an advantage. And they're not. They're being used. And so are you. Well, this is Faith Jones coming at you again with another one of my videos. Please like, share, and definitely subscribe. Have a good one.